Geographers, we love field work and uh, we, we'll never back down. We want to go on our field trips and every year group go on a different field trip and we have one day field trips, we have half day field trips locally. We've got one week residentials in the UK and abroad and they're a, f a fundamental part of geography teaching. But we can't go out every week. Okay, you're right, welcome uh, this morning. I want to take you on a field trip, but we can't go. Uh, we've only got an hour, it's freezing cold weather, so we're gonna go on a virtual field trip. And the virtual field trip will be provided by the materials on the school's virtual learning platform. So it says, today you're going to explore the Lower Don Valley of Sheffield from the comfort of your seat. And we'll record how we see the land being used today and understand why things are there now and how it's changed over the last 20, 30, 40 years. And how they've benefited Sheffield and Sheffield people like yourselves. On your page there, there's a map with lots of photographs. So as you hover over little pins on the map, you can actually look at a photograph that was taken exactly in that location. I'm looking at a Google map and at uh, pictures that have been tagged of different uh, places in uh, Lower Don Valley. It comes up on Sheffield Arena. The pictures were taken by a previous Year 8 group around the Don Valley area of Sheffield and they've been linked to an interactive map so these students can explore the area for themselves. That one's going to be metal wall because it's like a big building. There's like lots of leisure stuff and in the retail part there's like more things to do. Just, just scroll a little bit out of where you were. Uh, yeah. Is it just lower down the valley that we're looking yeah, at? Yeah, so if you just scroll back a little bit, stay inside this red line, that's, that's where we're interested today. OK, thank you. Once they've looked at the various locations, the next step is to sort them into different land use categories. OK, you've got the Sheffield Arena. Probably... <laughs> Leisure and entertainment because it, you can go and see shows there. And... For most children, they could just get on with it themselves. And I had the pleasure of going around talking about their work, talking about the geographical issues, but they were on task and they knew what they were doing and they knew what they had to do next because it was all laid out in front of them. This is a really clever picture because it looks just like a sign, but if you look at it, it's breaking down lots and lots of the different places in Valley Entertainment. So if you've got good eyes and see what they all are, you could get maybe eight different things into your table just from that one photograph. So that's a really good picture, that one. Soon they begin to see some patterns in the types of land use that they can see. Well, I've found out that there's lots of sports facilities and retail parks uh, around Sheffield, but there's not many uh, industry <coughs> things that we can see on the videos and, and uh, evidence. Uh. I've spotted that there's yeah. lots of leisure and entertainment facilities in Lower Don Valley. And I'm just describing, I'm just writing down what they are. There's the M1 from people coming like up different places. There's buses, trams, trains as well. And there's like tram lines and stuff like that for the chance to get there as well. The students upload their work onto the school's learning platform as they go. This tool on our learning platform is really, really useful. There's two main uses of this. I'm using this tool to monitor that the work is coming in. So at the end of the lesson, I can see uh, that everyone's submitted their work. But as they're working their way through tasks one, two and three, I know when to move the class on. When people are mostly finishing one task and I need to introduce the next task, I can see how many have done it. Because sometimes teachers are, are pushed on, the pace of lesson is pushed on by the fastest who are asking for more work and others get left behind. Whereas here I can move the lesson on at the right speed for the whole group. But the beauty of it being the faster children can move on to task two, task three, task four if they're ready and I can actually see their work that they're doing. But after the lesson, 
I can open up here and I can look at the actual work they've done. And so I can look at the work coming in through the lesson and get the pace of the lesson right. But afterwards, I can mark this from home. I don't have to carry any books home, any piles of work home. I can't lose their books. It's all on here. And wherever I find myself working with the internet, I, I can click on their work, look at what they've done and send them their feedback back. The students go on to look at other images of Sheffield on their virtual tour, of how the Don Valley used to be. When the uh, steelworks was closed down, they, a lot of people lost their jobs and uh, families were like, losing out on money. And, uh, but then when the uh, national government decided to build um, like Meadow Hall and entertainment, like people yeah, got, the, the a, got some there, jobs and like, it um, was used well because a lot of people came to it and they still do now. Um, my granddad used to work in the steelworks in Forge Masters and he used to like work on the big machines. And what they've done before this lesson is they've been looking at Sheffield and, and urban regeneration issues and where we've moved on to by the end of this lesson is looking at the engines for change and what, what do um, local and national government use to, to stimulate redevelopment of, of depressed city areas. Looking at the World Student Games. Right, so it says, um, right, how it has an impact on your own life. So I'm going to write how uh, it's made lots of... Because they had to build lots of uh, sports facilities. Uh, now we've got loads that we can use now. And uh, hopefully we can use that for the Olympics and train people to, so they can be in them. I think this was interesting because it's an area of Sheffield which they do know, but they've not really studied it in an analytical way and looking at the reasons why it's there. So uh, even though it's an area that's familiar to them, they were looking at it in a different way through a geographer's eyes today. But for places which are far away, which they can't easily get to, then virtual field trips have got massive benefits.